enjoying uh, sunrise in Tongariki. Zingao is right out there, if you can see, and there is a bunch of sun seekers right behind us. Is this pretty or what? With its 15 moai, Ahu Tangariki is the most impressive megalithic monument on the island. The statues are from 20 to 26 feet high and on top of a platform, which makes them even more impressive. These moai, these statues, are by all means not the only thing to see here in Rapa Nui, but they have become the icon of the island. They embody the spirits of each tribe's ancestors and they have developed in style throughout time. The construction of these ahus, these sacred spots, is striking not only because the resources to carve, to transport and to erect these statues here in Easter Island are very limited, but also because the simple presence of a highly developed culture here in the middle of nowhere is unique around the globe. It was pretty magical. I totally understand why they chose that very spot to build their giant statues. It's with a crater in the background, a volcanic crater, and on the other side you have these huge breaking waves. And when the when the sun comes up and you know puts its golden light on the on the hill, it's really magical. Great spot. Good choice. What is the plan, man? I want to go take a dip in here and then we're going to set sail for our next anchorage and then we're going to go probably onto their boat and have an awesome dinner. This is Rick's last day. Uh, it's a perfect end to the trip because behind me is Anacana Beach. This is our favorite spot here. And we're doing some subwinging right now, so the boys are off the back. I kind of just want to take it easy. It's been a little rough on Rick because the swell's been really big and the wind's been from the opposite direction. So he's been getting the wild treatment. And now today's really calm and it's really pretty here. It's a beautiful day, perfect for what they're doing. So we're just gonna, they've been in the water for like half an hour getting drunk. And I'm just gonna go until they get tired or fall off. <laughs> As I do with most of the people that visit the boat, I want to know like what you would do differently, uh, what you've learned, and what was the good and bad parts of the trip for you. Boat's a little small for me. Okay. Um, I learned that I want to sail, that I'm not going to get too sick, I'm going to be fine. I can't decide whether or not I want to do a monohull or do a um, catamaran. Well, so, we're going to work on that. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. I think the best thing for you to do is to get on a monohull boat for a couple of days. It's the yeah. same thing you did here. Yep. So you can see the motion and see if you can live on the lean. And... Yeah, that's the hard part. It was just amazing, absolutely amazing. You guys are amazing. So I can't wait to see you guys again. Um, we're gonna hook up again, and I'm sure I'll have a laundry list of things to bring it. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I get my boat. You guys are going to sail on my boat. That'd be fun. You're going to crew my boat. That would be fun. I'd like you to buy a boat in Florida then, because I'd like to see Cuba again. So okay. go ahead. I'll do that. <laughs> on the Pacific coast today, we can hit Galapagos. Yeah, yeah. There's, or... a, there's a few different destinations that we, we want to go to. Okay. That we didn't get to. Well, I'm brand new, so 
Yeah. Whatever those destinations are, are on my list too. Cool. So we're good. All right, man. If you ever need anything, just uh, give me give me a holler. Oh, you know it. <laughs> We pulled the anchor up and are now sailing from Anakena to Hangaroa because um, the night has been pretty rough and the waves have been getting pretty big over there at Anakena. So we're going now to the to the western side of the island uh, for protection. It is super windy and we're having the wind from the back because we're going from the east to the western side of the island and the wind and the waves are coming from the east um, and we're we're going at about nine knots and um, this boat is so steady right now. I'm absolutely not used to that. We mostly beat and into waves and da 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 and we're going we're going eight nine knots no problem right now. The waves are gone now. The island's blocking the swell so we're just getting the wind swell now so we're not surfing anymore but it's still fast. Especially with no main. What are we doing? We're waiting for the honeyman. Did what? we introduce people to the honeyman? No, not yet. So okay. start from the beginning. <laughs> the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we came from God knows where and we were hitchhiking to Anakena. So that guy picked us up um, and he was in that suit that you wear when you work with bees, you know, with the hood. So you look kind of like an astronaut and we were like, okay. And we hopped in with him. He took us to Anakina and on the way he um, all of a sudden he stopped in the middle of the road and was like, he said to us like get out, get out. We're like, okay, what the fuck? And uh, <laughs> we got out and we went to the back of the truck and he just opened one of the boxes and gave us like this huge piece of honeycomb, broke it open and honey all over our hands and we ate it and it was delicious. <laughs> so it turns out the guy it's raining a little, it does that here. The guy that we hitchhiked with yesterday is the honeyman of this island. He produces all the honey that's being sold from Easter Island. And today, he's supposed to pick us up for a tour because he's got boxes and boxes full of honeycomb that he has to produce to make it to honey honey, or you know, to extract the honey and put it into jars so he can sell it wherever. And um, we're gonna see all that. And we're gonna take you guys and we're gonna eat a lot of honey, hopefully. <laughs> Manu Mere! Como estas, amigo? The bee man! <laughs> That's full of honey. So, he, so he's just taking the top off of it. This is the laboratory. This is the guardia. It does look like there's mira, somebody mira. in here. James. Oh, oh. Look at oh, that. Oh, it's like a museum here. Si. Wow. This is full of miel. Look here. What good! He's going to take the Rapa Nui. Yes. Rapa Nui. <laughs> this guy is fucking awesome. Manu Meli! Manu Meli! 
I gotta rush to keep up with you, man. <laughs> He's fast as me. Morada. Oh, yeah, see, see, see. It's a different sabor. He's quick, that guy. Mira, 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 What was planned as a short visit at the Honeybird's place turned into foraging for fruit for hours. Because we had a long passage ahead, we stuffed our bags with all this goodness. Pero todo ese que está en el suelo, hermano, está bueno porque nosotros lo recogemos todo el suelo. Sí, todo es bueno. Sí, lo voy a llevar este a la Gaby. Solo mete un poco, un poco. Pero recoge, saca verdes, verdes sí. para que te duren más. stuffed our bag with oranges, lime, avocado, and maracuya. Honestly, how many of you knew what a passion fruit looks like? Yeah, can you coffee? Coffee, see? Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh. This is one of the sweetest ones I've ever had, I swear. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Especial por café? Sí. Pero este es miel de, de Chile. De Chile. <laughs> Pero es diferente, es de Quillay. Es otro. Pero para el café. Mi preferiría su, su miel. ¿Sí? No, es que sí. yo estoy aburrido de mi miel. Po. Estoy aburrido, por eso me gusta la tres, Pero no lo puedes decir no, a no, nadie. No. Cruising is so much more than just sailing and visiting remote locations. It's meeting people all around the world and forming human connections. So thank you so much, Omar, for sharing this sweet afternoon with us.